In this video, I'm going to show you how you can kickstart your creativity, even if you're really busy and or really tired and have almost no materials. Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is The Sunday Art Show. Oh, that Monday was one of the worst Mondays ever. What a day. Super stressful. Those meetings went on far too long. I am absolutely tired out. How on earth am I going to get any art done? OK, so let's do something. What have I got to hand? I've got some paper. I've got a Sharpie marker and I've got a highlighter pen. OK, I'm leaving them on the table. I'm not going to put them away. I'll come back tomorrow. Oh, well, Tuesday. Today was a little bit better, actually. Things went really quite smoothly. Just settled down to watch my favourite TV show. And uh, going to head to bed in a minute. <sighs> oh, yeah, I've got those. Uh, Got those art materials there, haven't I? What on earth am I going to draw? Um, I know. Head to the kitchen, open a few cupboards. Let's see what we've got here. I've got some uh, chilli powder. I've got some biscuits and a spoon. OK, I'll, I'll stick them on the table. Going to leave those there with my materials. Wednesday evening. Oh, must remember to pick up Tim after work from his uh, after school club. Uh, just chilling here in the car. Got about 10 minutes until he's he's um, meant to be here. You know what, if I kept the sketchbook in the car and just a biro, ballpoint pen or something, then I could actually sketch some of those people waiting around or maybe, you know, the parked cars, whatever, that might come in handy. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. God, Thursday evening, yeah. I really must... Uh... Oh, geez, where did the evening go? Um, oh, yeah, I better head for bed. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Those uh, those biscuits, that chilli powder and spoon, it almost looks like a little cityscape or something weird. Let's um, let's just rearrange those a minute. Yeah, yeah, I might draw those tomorrow night actually. No, wait, I'm not doing them tomorrow night. I'm starting right now. We're going for it. I'm going to bed five minutes later than planned. I just don't care. Now, when we're drawing these objects, we're working with limited time. We don't need to worry about trying to copy them exactly. What we're trying to do is be inspired by the shapes. So, for example, with the chili powder, you can see I've just put in basically a simple rectangle with a little notch out on either side. For the biscuits, it's just another rectangle. And don't be overly concerned about making these complete shapes. It's OK to leave bits missing. With the spoon, I've basically just drawn a circle and now I'm putting in a bit of the handle. It's not an accurate depiction. It's just an arrangement of shapes because I can use my imagination now to make that arrangement of shapes, whatever I want it to be. So maybe, as I said, maybe it's a little cityscape or a building or something. So let's put a person in here. The sketches you've done earlier in the week of people or whenever, whenever you've done them, or if you're with a friend or a family member, you can use them as reference. I'm just making this one up. And again, I'm keeping it super simple. So some shades. I'm not drawing a complete head, just enough to indicate a person is there. Put a tie in. Don't worry about the collar. Put some shoulders in. Don't worry about anything else, really. Maybe a line for the arm. So super quick, super easy, reasonably effective. Then I go back to the background. Let's put a door in. Let's put some windows in. I can make up the shapes of these windows, how many there are and where they go. I could do triangular windows if I wanted to, but then I can look back at my objects and notice, hey, hang on, I'm reflected in the spoon and my reflection is upside down. So maybe the guy in my drawing is reflected upside down in this weird giant spoon or whatever it is. So I just draw in a little profile and I shade it in of, a, of an upside down head and shoulders. And then I copy a line in the reflection of the spoon. A couple of quick lines to indicate a path. Colour in the chap's sunglasses, leave a little bit of white showing. Put in an arm of the glasses. And we're starting to create this weird random composition. And then I can just shade in bits as I see fit. Add little details. You know, you could pick up a magazine 
and see a photo in there and that might inspire you, but kind of just take part of it, not all of it. I can add a triangle as another building in the background. And then, you know, what else can I add? I can sort of think, do I need to do anything else? Well, hang on, I've got the chili uh, powder there. Let's use that and draw a circle. That could be a sun up in the sky. So the idea is to look at your surroundings, your everyday. Sometimes these experiences, they might feel mundane, but if you look at them creatively from a different angle, upside down, at a different scale, a different perspective, if you just grab what's around you and think of it in a different way, then you can make it an adventure. So if I look at the spoon, you can see light is reflecting off the spoon and bouncing off the tabletop. So using, and there's also light on that uh, chili pepper pot as well, you can see. So if I use the highlighter, I can use that to just fill in little bursts of light in my simplified drawing. Uh, let's see what we got here. We've got peas. Yeah, got those. Bread. Yeah. Oat bread. Yeah, got that too. Uh, aubergine. What's aubergine? That's eggplant, right? Yeah, eggplant's aubergine. Pretty sure. Pretty sure eggplant is aubergine. Then, oh, look at those, uh, look at those people over there. That's pretty cool. That's a nice little composition. If I brought my sketch pad with me, I could totally draw those people. It would probably only take me five minutes. Yeah, if I had a bit of extra time, I could park myself in the cafe and uh, do a sketch there. And actually, now that I think about it, this is a pretty big supermarket. They might even sell a few art materials, you know, probably just stuff for children, but it's going to be pretty affordable and stuff I could just experiment with. So when you've done your preliminary sketch, you can then start to add some color. Now, I've actually redrawn my version of the sketch. I haven't included the sun. I've just changed things. In, in particular, I've just changed the proportion of the guy's head because previously he was looking a little uh, you know, just a little bit out of proportion. You don't have to. You can keep working on the cheap paper if you want, but I've chosen to use some mixed media paper. Um, I've stuck with a small size because we're still working with limited time. And the big advantage of the mixed media paper is it's not going to buckle and crinkle in the same way as uh, normal paper will when it gets wet. So I'm just starting with a flat brush and you know, you can use any brush you want. You could use an old decorating brush if you want to. You don't have, you could use an old toothbrush. You could, you know, um, use a makeup brush if it's old. You know, obviously you don't want to get paint on something that you value. But the point is just get the paper wet. And I'm just deliberately wetting the sky and the background. And for the most part, I'm avoiding the buildings. You know, I'm not being too fussy about it. I'm working with my pad of paper vertical. Again, you don't have to just stick it on a desktop and keep it flat if you like. And then in terms of the paint to use, you can use poster paint, acrylic paint. You can use some old emulsion paint that you use to decorate your walls because you just want to get going. That's the thing. Just do something. I'm using watercolor. I'd recommend that you can get uh, kits of watercolor really quite cheaply. And it's really quick. That's the thing. And it goes a long way as well. So I'm just picking up. Uh, this color here. Now, we haven't got much time, you know, within the premise of this video, so I'm not even going to worry about mixing colors. I'm just picking up this color here. It's nice and bright, dipping into my water, and I'm just going to run that. So you can see this paper is buckling a little bit, but um, it will flatten. I, I should have taped it down, really, but it will flatten down when uh, the paint dries. So, the point is we've got a few minutes, so we're just going to lay in a nice fluid wash. This is why I wetted the paper in the in the beginning, because that's going to allow the paint to run and do its own thing. And then if I wanted to put some indication of the sun, now in terms of the, the pot you use to hold your water, you can obviously just use an old cup. Um, and if you don't have a nice watercolor kit like I've got here, you know, it's, it's not particularly expensive, this kit, but it's, you know, it's quite, uh, quite good. Just got a hair there. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm saying three things at once. So if you want to sort of suggest a sun, you can just lift out some of the wet color with your clean brush, clean wet brush. Um, but if you don't have a nice watercolor kit, you don't have a palette to hand, then just use an old plate. You know, it's... Um, 
even an old piece of cardboard will do. So I'm going to come back in with that same colour now, but I'm going to make it a bit stronger. And maybe this chap has got uh, a dark top on. So I'm putting the, the paint down thicker. And then because we're not going to worry about mixing colours, I'm going to take the same colour, again strong, and darken his hair. We'll darken his shades, leave a little bit of um, a little bit of white paper there, so there's a bit of a highlight. And then we can move over to perhaps his reflection upside down in the spoon. I mean, is it a spoon? We don't know what's going on in this landscape. It's a little bit weird and odd. But this bit was inspired by the spoon. And then with what I've got left on the on the palette, I'm just going to whip a line of colour across there and then very likely there. And then perhaps let's colour that bit in there as well. So now it's the next day. You've got this single colour wash of watercolour. You've let the watercolour do its own thing in the sky, lift it out a little bit here. We've put in a bit of dry brush quickly. So it's all very, you know, loose and very, very quick. But now, you know, because I recreated the sketch, I don't have any yellow. So let's come back in with my highlighter pen. So let's put some, some light, some bright yellow on the left hand side of this chap, just like we did before. And then we can put some in here. And the key is to not think about things too much. You know, you want to just have a bit of fun with this. And often what you'll find is when you're having fun and you let go and you stop, you know, being overly concerned about what the result is going to be. Often, you know, not always, but often that will produce something which is visually more interesting than something that's really carefully considered. Now let's imagine it's a few weeks later. We can imagine that you've done several of these quick studies and you pop them away in an envelope and you don't really look at them for quite a while. And then one day you think, oh, let's just go back through my sketches. Let's go back through my little creative experiments. Those drawings and paintings that I've done, when I just had two minutes to spare and then three minutes and five minutes and then back to two minutes. And maybe we come across the little sketch that we did before and we think, well, actually, I'd quite like to explore that theme further, but I'm going to do it on a slightly bigger scale. So now I've got some A3 mixed media paper here, which I wetted. And as you can see, I'm using the same colour as before, but I'm not doing any initial drawing because the background lines with the Sharpie in my sketch, I thought, well, they're a bit harsh looking. And I don't want to include those in the in the finished painting but what I can do is still try and maintain that sense of fun and spontaneity and carefree attitude when I paint something on a larger scale so I'm sticking with the same color same brush and I've just put in a wash for the sky as you can see but now instead of drawing in the the buildings I'm going to just Use the square brush, or the flat brush rather, to pick out a silhouette working wet in wet so that the watercolour does some lovely blending and weirdness for us. Create some soft edges and some unpredictable effects. So What's happening is we start out with our initial sketch and then in my case I did a second sketch which I painted with watercolour and that was different from the first and this again will be different from the second and the first and consequently we are, are, we are developing our own little style without kind of having to consciously think about developing a style. It's just going to happen naturally because, you know, 
unless we spend hours and hours slavishly copying what we've done before, all these little differences are going to just, you know, create something which has a different feel and a different look to what has come before. But the inspiration started just by picking up a spoon, a packet of biscuits and some chilli powder. Now, as you can see, I'm working very quickly here, quite deliberately, because I'm still trying to stay within the theme of this video, which is, you know, you, if you're watching this, you're a busy person. You don't have very much time to mess around with mixing up colors. But you can just experiment within whatever your lifestyle is, hopefully. And, you know, maybe something cool comes out of it. And even if it doesn't, even if, you know, a particular painting is a disaster, you know, that happens sometimes. And the point is that um, you're still learning every time you put pen to paper or you put uh, down, you know, some paint with a brush, or even if you just look at the shapes that construct a person or an object. You're learning the whole time. Uh, it may not be apparent in the moment, but over the months and years, your observation skills just naturally get better. And you do improve so that, you know, if you do this sort of practice regularly, you will just develop your own style. You will improve and when you look back in years to come, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have definitely undergone an evolution in terms of your artistic style and, you know, what you're, what you're capable of doing. So while I was chatting away there, let's just put in a bit of dry brush like I did before in there. So, you know, obviously I'm, I'm just making this thing up. A bit of a hill in the background. Um, so again, I've just done that in a short time so we could imagine, yeah, you know, we could let that dry completely and come in with a different color. But I'm going to just go go ahead and bring in a second color. So I've added some burnt sienna and mixed that into what I already had on the palette. And while the paint is the first layer of paint is still wet, I'm just going to use that to put in a little more warmth here and there. Well, I guess the, I guess it's no, I suppose it's difficult to know with this color, isn't it? It's, it is a reddish color, but it's fairly co cool, I would say. Um, so again, you know, I don't want to go too, too crazy. I want to keep this, you know, loose and, uh, you know, in keeping with the theme of the video so that, you know, I've got, to, I've got to be able to do it quickly. Um, but in principle, you know, I could come back day after day and do more and more if I wanted to. And then one of the things we can do is I've just come in with a paper towel to pick off that little bead of watercolour that had formed there. And while the paint is still damp, that's a really quick and efficient way of creating some nice effects, a little sense of atmosphere. And then in the previous versions, we used some of the yellow highlighter. So I've just picked up some yellow watercolor and I'm thinking about, you know, for the most part, I'm going to add this to the guy in the foreground to you know, make him seem closer. Again, I don't want to overdo it. It's just, it's just about adding a few little licks of color. And we can overlay that color on top of the colors we've put down already, because that's going to give us some automatic color mixing. And then there was some light reflected in and from the spoon. So we can do that. And then you know, with a clean brush, perhaps just soften some of that.
and now with some cobalt blue. So I haven't done any color mixing on the palette really, except for that one time. And you can see I've put that on far too, uh, in far too fluid a way. So we'll have to just try and adapt. I could try and mop that up. I might do in a moment, but um, you know, this is just an experiment. So I'm not overly worried, although I have to say that's not looking great, is it? So let's give this chap a bit of a beard. And we'll darken his hair with that trickle of blue. And then we can keep going with that to create further shadows. Let's just get a bit more paint here. Darken his tie. 